Hello everyone. I wanted to show you how to apply a texture to your uh, portrait image. Um, so here I have an image that's pretty much completed. Um, and at the end, I'm going to apply a texture. And you want to make sure that you apply your textures when you're finished editing because once you apply a texture, it kind of ties the whole image together and if you try to make any changes afterwards um, it tends to not look right or it looks um, you know it might look muddy or it like might look fake or something so so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a texture um, I'm holding down my shift key and dragging over an image that I had open in another window in Photoshop and I'm going to size this so that it fits my image. I'm just dragging each edge. You can also drag it out the corners if you want. So I'm just doing it this way. Um, so it always defaults to your normal blending mode. And what you want to do is play around with the different blending modes to see what works with your image. Um, usually, I would say 90 5% of the time I'm using soft light. Um, sometimes overlay works, but it tends to look more contrasty um, or just a little bit more intense. Um, and any other ones pretty much just aren't going to work in this case. Um, so I'm going to go with soft light. A couple things here. So with this particular texture, I like the coloring. It kind of blended in with the overall coloring of the image, so it just really ties in very nicely. However, in this case, you know, I may not want all this texture on her skin. Now, if I want this to look like an old painting, you know, I might leave it, but probably not at 100%. 100% is usually a bit too much. There's a couple of ways of taking this texture off the skin. One way is, which is, some people might use, and it may or may not work, is just simply adding a layer mask and changing your brush to, uh, you know, just make sure it's a very soft brush. You can go 100% opacity at a low flow. And I'm going to make sure um, my brush is black so that I can erase what I don't want. Now if I start doing that on her skin what happens is it also loses the coloring of the texture because you're you know basically wiping off the texture completely the coloring and the texture itself. So I see a lot of folks do this and what happens is that you know your subject in the background look, you know, it just doesn't flow well. It looks like she was cut out of the background. Um, even if we lower the opacity, you know, it looks a little better, but we still have this harsh, you know, line between our um, texture and our subject. Now, one way to counter this, what you could do is switch your brush back to white. We can lower the opacity and we can very softly brush back on a little bit of that texture back on these edges so that it does, you know, blend in a little bit more. Um, you know, but again, we, you know, we have this difference between the coloring of that texture and our subject's coloring. And it may or may not work. What we could do there's another way we could do this. I'm just going to delete that layer mask. Is and I I just found out about this not too long ago and it, it kind of works pretty cool. And but there there's other ways of doing this, but I'm going to show you this method. Um, we're going to change this back to normal just so that I oops and change the opacity back to 100 just so that I can see the texture just by itself. I'm going to um, click on I. I'm on a Mac, so for eyedropper tool. I'm going to choose a color on this texture that's a mid-tone. You know, I'm not going to go with this really bright one or the darker ones, but a mid-tone in this texture. So, I don't know, let's go with maybe right here. Okay. So now I have that selected in my color palette. I'm going to switch this back to soft light. And now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to switch to a brush again, which is B on my Mac. I'm going to change my opacity to 100, and my flow is going to be, I don't know, like 9 or 10, I don't know, 10% or something like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to paint over her or the parts that I don't want that harsh texture to show, but I still want the coloring to come through. So I'm going to paint. Now my, I can probably increase this flow a little bit. Um, so I'm going to yeah paint over her skin. I'm using a Wacom uh, pen, and I love it. I used to have I used to use a mouse for this, and after switching to a Wacom pen and tablet, or Wac, I don't know if it's Wacom or Wacom, <laughs> um, I have not gone back to a mouse. It's so much easier to work with a pen and tablet because it's just like painting and you have so much more control over your brush. You can control the pressure. It's just so much easier. Um, I would recommend it if you've been playing around with the idea of getting a Wacom tablet and pen. I would really encourage you to, to try it. I actually tried it when I first got it. Didn't like it put it away for a while, and then I thought, you know what, I spent money on this, I should really just try and use it again, and I just stuck with it, and after I got the hang of it, I loved it and never looked back. So what I did here is I lowered my opacity, and I'm just going to go over her this a piece of her fabric just a little bit. So now what we have here is the image, you know, with the coloring of our texture, but the texture's not on her. We can, again, we can lower the opacity of the overall texture, so now it blends in much nice, much nicer because, um, you know, we didn't lose the coloring. You know, and again, if we wanted to bring back some of that texture just around the edges a little bit, um, you know, I'm not sure if this will work at this point. No, I guess once you once you do that, once you color it out, you can't really bring it back because technically you're coloring on the texture. But anyhow, I just wanted to show you that method. Um, and again, I hardly ever use my textures at 100%, so you just lower it to where you like it. Another trick we could do, so let's say we we don't want the coloring of this texture. We want just the texture but not that um, brownish color. So what we can do is I'm just going to delete this. I'm going to bring my texture oops, back in. And I'm going to take the coloring out of this texture. So I'm going to go back to soft light and I'm going to come up here. Well, I guess you, I don't know if you can see it in my recording, but I'm going up to, um, I, I'm selected on the texture and I'm going up to image and I'm going to adjustments and hue saturation. And here I can actually reduce the saturation of the texture to where it's not giving me any type of color or tone whatsoever. And it's just leaving me with the texture. Okay, so now we just have a texture. Now, of course, it's making the image a little brighter because that texture had some brightness to it. We can even come up to image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and we can make that texture a little darker if we wanted to. So, you know, we, you really have a lot of control over your textures. You're not stuck with whatever you have, you really can manipulate your texture. You know, again, going back to image adjustments, hue saturation, I can even change the color of, oops, uh, of the texture. Well, I already took the saturation away, so I guess it won't work. But if you were to go into hue earlier um, and change the hue, you can actually change the color, you know, the coloring of it as well. So now, if I want to just take the texture off of her, I can just create a layer mask and then this is much easier. You can just come in here and you know
you know, take the texture off of her skin, not have to worry about it not blending in very well because there is no coloring on the texture. It's just the texture, not any color toning at all. However, you still want to lower that opacity so that you don't see this dark, you know, part with and without the texture. You can lower the opacity, change your brush, paint on, maybe a little bit back on if you want to make it blend a little better. And then you can lower the opacity of your texture to where it looks more natural. Also, another trick, let's say, you know, this texture, I really like it, but it's too, it's too um, sharp, I guess. Um, you know, we've got this nice depth of field um, with her skin here, or this lower part of her body, and then we've got this really sharp um, texture. What we can do is click on our texture, go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then we can blur that texture a little bit so that it, you know, does look a little more natural. Here we are at 0%. I'm just going to or zero radius. I'm just gonna come up until you know I like what I see. You know, and maybe it's five percent, maybe it's seven or eight percent, nine percent. I'm gonna click OK. Again, lower the opacity, and that looks so much nicer. It looks more natural. Um, you're just getting a little bit of texture back there. There's the before and after. Um, you know. And you can lower that opacity or, you know, I would say, you know, I would say it, you know, it's tough to go above 40 or 50 percent with some textures. But, you know, I would say a rule of thumb is between 10 and 30 to 40 percent is usually where a lot of textures look nice. But again, play with it. Play with the blending modes. Play with the coloring, the Gaussian blur. You know, you've got a lot to, to experiment with and see how it looks on your images. Anyway, I hope that was helpful, and I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you later.